really only talked about Sahih and Daif. Later scholars put an intermediary category between the Sahih and Daif, which is really another category of Sahih, and they called it Hasan. In the early, among the early scholars, they used Sahih or Hasan, they meant one and the same thing. It meant it was authentic. <coughs> Later scholars, they used Hasan to indicate a hadith which was a notch below the highly authentic. It was authentic, but just a notch below. Why? Because it related back to the narrators. The narrators were not from the second and third category. They ended up from the fourth and fifth category of classes that I mentioned, where they were known to make some occasional mistakes. Right? But they were truthful and their narrations were authentic. But because of their status, the individual status, the hadith overall is lowered to the level of hasan. Right? And the hadith which is hasan is also evidence for Islamic law. If I had to follow it, just like the hadith sahih. Unless there is a hadith which is sahih on the same topic which supersedes it. At this point, we follow the hadith sahih and we leave the hasan. It is not abrogated, but there is another hadith which is stronger than it. Then that stronger hadith which is exp expressing something else, either explaining it in a different way or whatever, then that is the one that we go with. Now, the hadith, that hadith which is classified as Hassan due to slight errors in some of the narrators. And of course, human beings are human beings. They're going to commit errors, some mistakes. Right? So it's not that they were bad, but just that they did make some noticeable mistakes. However, the narration itself is accurate. That, type, that hadith is classified also as Hassan Lidati. That is a hadith which is hasan due to its own internal factors, not due to any external factors. If such a hadith, which is hasan lidati, has a number of supporting narrations, it can be elevated up to sahih lighayri. Okay. This is where the Sahih the lady comes from, comes from this class. There is another class which is called Hassan Lighayri, just as we had Sahih Lighayri, or, or a hadith which is Hassan due to external factors. It means that this hadith was in fact da'if. It was in fact a weak hadith classified initially as weak and inauthentic. However, due to a number of other narrations, which support the meaning of this hadith or some of the wording of this hadith, it is elevated to the level of Hassan Lighayri. Hassan Lighayri. It cannot reach the level of Sahih, but it can reach the level of Hassan Lighayri. Okay? Now, that represents the basic body of narrations or classification for narration which are classified as authentic, either Hassan or Sahih. I should mention here that a hadith which is Daif, which has been elevated up to the level of Hassan Lighayri, is one in which nobody in that chain of narration has been labeled a liar. I mean, because if you have six narrators, five out of the six are thiqa. They are amongst those who would make the hadith sahih. But you have one person in the chain who is a liar, kadhab, then the whole chain drops to the level of not authentic at all. Right? So then the judgment on the chain is based on its weakest link. That's the principle. The judgment on the chain it's based on its weakest link. So, obviously then, the people in the chain should not be below 
the fifth and the sixth level of, uh, of classes of narrators. Fifth and sixth classes, we said, were those who were truthful narrators known to make mistakes due to poor memories, right? The fourth class is what we had for Hassan. Truthful narrators whose reliability is slightly tainted because of occasional mistakes. Whereas the fifth class, which is now taking it into the realm of Da'if, which can be elevated up to Hassan Ghairi, is one whose truthful narration, narrators who make or know to make a number of mistakes due to poor memories, or they are narrators of only a few hadiths whose rejected hadiths are not due to defects found in him, but due to other narrators in the chain. So, <clears throat> these were the categories of hadiths. And to identify a very famous hadith which falls in this category of Hassan Lighiri is the hadith of Asma bint Abi Bakr is the very famous hadith about which scholars in these times have differed. The hadith where Prophet Muhammad sees Asma, Asma wearing a dress which is somewhat thin and he tells her when a young woman reaches the age of puberty it is not befitting that anything be seen of her other than her face and hands. Right? This is a hadith which uh, supports the, the position that it is permissible to expose, for a woman to expose face and hands. Now those who have opposed this hadith have said it's da'if. Yes, this narration is da'if. However, when you gather all of the narrations concerning it, you will find, as Sheikh Masruddin al Albani and other scholars have ruled, that it is in fact Hadith Hassan Ghairi. In fact, he found, Sheikh Masr, before he died, did find some narrations of it which elevated to the next level of Hassan Ridati. Not that particular narration which is in Abu Dawood, but other narrations of it which are in fact Hassan Ridati, which are in fact acceptable and authentic Hadith. Okay, this is where I will stop and inshallah we will continue with the second uh, category of hadith which are the hadith da'if. We will look at the reasons why they were classified as da'if and uh, inshallah uh, be enlightened to be able to understand some of the terminology that we hear concerning hadith in books or read it in books or hear them in lectures. <coughs> Now, try to answer some of the questions. Any of the brothers have a question you want to throw out before I read? Huh? Okay, brother is asking, uh, is it even now that people are coming up with rulings on hadith, I mean, meaning that how many thousand years have passed, you know, thousand two hundred years have passed, you know, since the hadiths were compiled and collected into the books, and an analyses were given, etc., etc. Can somebody pop up today and reclassify a hadith which was sahih? Da'if or reclassify a Da'if Hadith Sahih or Hassan or whatever. Can, can people pop up and do these things today? Yes, it is possible because information is at people's fingertips today which wasn't at their fingertips a hundred years ago. We have now a CD we can put in in which you know, all of the narrations, you know, of all of the books can be compiled and you can draw from sources that the average person to do that piece of research, what you can do now in five and ten minutes may have taken a researcher 
before months and years having to travel to go and get this information. Now they have put together all the books into into single CDs, and you have you know uh, search capabilities of drawing from here, there, and everywhere. And yes, it's possible that you may find narrations of a hadith that slipped the mind of many scholars. I mean, of course, what you're going to do is that when you find it, you're going to find that there was a scholar who said, it's not that you're going to find something which nobody knew existed, because for it to be in the books, it means that people knew it existed. Right? But it's just that it was not commonly known. Um, what is the difference between Sanad and Isnad? Nothing. One and the same thing. The Sanad is the Isnad. Hmm? Grammatically speaking, Sanad is a noun, Isnad is a verbal noun. Sanad means the chain, Isnad means making a chain. Okay. Question Hassan Lidati is Hassan because of internal factors, and Hassan Lirei is Hassan because of external factors. What are the internal and external factors? Well, the internal factors we said, a Hassan Lidati hadith is one in which it fulfills the five conditions of Siha, except that the narrators, in terms of their memories, were of a slightly lower level than those that we classified as the highly authentic Sahih. So that is an internal factor. Right? The Hadith, which is Hassan Lighayri, for it to be Hassan because of external factors, it means that the hadith was in fact internally classified as da'if because narrators were a drop below but due to the fact that there are other narrations right there are other narrations of this same hadith which are of a similar level through different channels altogether when you combine them together they strengthen each other and elevate the overall hadith to the level of Hassan the Ghairi. Uh, with regards to the hadith of Asma, I read somewhere that it is a Mursal hadith. What does this mean? No, the hadith is not Mursal. Uh, there, are, there are some narrations of it which are Mursal, but the hadith uh, is Mutasal. Mursal meaning that the name of the Sahabi who narrated the hadith was missing. Uh, Ishaq Kazi, Kazia, please meet your sister outside. <laughs> I have a question here on yoga, but I'm going to save it until after we finish the hadith on our questions on hadith. What is the difference between mutawatir and ahad? We're coming to that. That's coming up. Mutawatir and ahad. But quickly, you know, it's a quick definition. A mutawatir hadith is one uh, on which each level of its chain has so many narrators that it would be inconceivable that they conspired to fabricate a lie on all levels of the chain. Whereas the Ahad is one in which there may be one, two, three, or four narrators at any point or more than one point on the uh, Isnad, the narration of the Hadith. Information is at the fingertips, but technology also makes fabrication child's play. How do we know what to trust? A normal Muslim trying to gain knowledge. No. Fabrication of the hadith is not child's play. Because the books of hadith are known. If a person is going to make up a hadith, right, get an authentic chain, put together a hadith, 
you know, like for example, you have a book which is called Tafsir Ibn Abbas. Right? By sticking the name Ibn Abbas on it, people think, oh, this has got to be the thing. This is what we need to get. This is the Tafsir Ibn Abbas, because he was known to be the top uh, Mufassir of the Quran. However, when you go and check the, the chains of narration of this Tafsir, you find that the majority of them are Daif, weak. So it's not reliable. Tafsir Ibn Abbas, which is on the market, is not reliable. Okay? So, similarly, if a person brings a hadith, and they stick a well-known name and they make up a chain, they have to attribute it back to a book. Right? Not a book which they just invented and put on the internet, no, or on the uh, CD. It has to be back to a known book which was in writing, already existing, before it was transferred to CD. So, it's not possible today to fabricate and get away with uh, fabrication of hadith. I mean, you might fool the ignorance, ignorant people around you, but to say you're going to fool the scholars, no. Okay, it's uh, 5 to 10. I'm going to switch now to our off-the-topic question. If we have no other questions on the topic, on the topic, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, with the authentic uh, hadiths are uh, limited, uh, knowing in number, and the ta'if are authentic, uh, continually evolving, is this true or false? No. Brother's statement, authentic hadiths are known in number, and weak hadiths are continually evolving. No. No, we wouldn't say that. The total body of hadiths is a total body. Uh, in it are hadiths which are sahih, in it are hadiths which are da'if. Scholarship, modern recent scholarship, has reclassified some hadiths which were known to be or thought to be sahih before as da'if. And some hadiths which were commonly thought to be da'if have been elevated to hasan li ghayrihi and so and so. So it is a science which is not a closed ended science because our knowledge has not encompassed the whole show. Did uh, Sheikh Al Albani have an ijaza? The ijaza system basically, you know, died out, with few exceptions in most parts of the Muslim world. He studied under uh, leading scholars, and he was known to be a student of some of the leading scholars of Hadith uh, in in Syria. And uh, his father himself was a scholar from the Hanafi school. Uh, so the process of having studied under these known scholars speaks for itself in our times. Can a Muslim, this is the last question now, unless there's a question from further question. Oh, you had a question? Yes. Is this on the topic or off the topic? On the topic. On the topic, go ahead. In the book by Shibu Bani, Okay, brother's question, <coughs> where we find two scholars differing, one says a particular practice is sahih, and the other one says it's daif, where do we as laymen fit into this process? Well, if we have picked up enough knowledge of ulum al-hadith that we're studying now, we go further, and we read the reasons why one scholar said that. Because, as you said, in Sheikh Nasser's book, he says that practice is da'if, and he gives the reasons why. And in Sheikh bin Baz's book, 
He says they're both okay, but he doesn't give the reasons why. What do you as a layman do? You follow the one who gave the reasons why. Okay? Until such time as you hear the reasons to the contrary, and you become convinced otherwise. I'm wondering if that's a rule, isn't it? If, uh, you, uh... That was the same rule that the, the Hadith scholars used in judging whether we put a label on a person or not. If an accusation is made with reasons behind it, evidence, then it was accepted. But if an accusation was made without evidence, then it was not accepted. How can scholars of this level? Okay, brother is asking, how can scholars of this level make this? Well, when we talk about scholars of this level, you know, if we compare Sheikh Nasruddin in Hadith to Sheikh bin Baz, they're not on the same level at all. That's the bottom line. Sheikh Nasruddin is the muhaddith, you know, in, 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 the, in the full sense. Whereas Sheikh bin Baz is a scholar of fiqh who knows Hadith. He memorized Sahih Bukhari. He had a prodigious memory. But he was not on the level of an analysis of hadith that Sheikh Nasr Din was. May Allah have mercy on both of them. Okay, our last question. Can a Muslim perform yoga exercises? Yes, as long as you don't take on the philosophy along with it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilaha ant, astaghfiruka wa natubu alayka.